Juan Ángel, muchísimas gracias de mi parte, a ti, a Guillermo Solana y a Leticia de Cos, por haberme invitado en este lugar mágico, y que eh, por mí es un viaje sentimental de ser aquí, yo de, de que conozco España, por mí España es el, el mejor lugar del mundo. Eh, soy muy triste que unos personajes de esa institución, particularmente, eh, no son nunca con, con nosotros, Tomás Llorenz, a quien voy a dedicar estas este, pocas palabras, y otros eh, amigos carísimos eh, son pensionados y eh, viven en Málaga, Juan Alberto Soler Miret y eh, Antonio <coughs> Salcedo Crespo, pero todavía Marc Borobia y Ubaldo Sedano son aquí, y son los eh, compañeros de mi vida a la Thyssen unos años eh, eh, antes, eh, junto con María de Feverelli, que fue mi compañía no solo a Madrid, sino a Florencia, y, y por, por vivir cada día de, nos, de, de, de los años antes. Ok, I will change to English because, you know, I am uh, half Italian, half German, but my uh, father language would be in Italian, so I'm trying to do with English. I'm sorry for reading. I've uh, so much admired uh, Marco Grassi, his splendid, splendid uh, talk. Um, and so, so vivid, uh, fantastic. I would have liked to do something like that. It is, it's not possible. So, uh, I will, okay, you see the title of my intervention. Let's see the next one. Okay. If Baron Heinrich Tissemosemitsa had complied, compiled a sublime collection of old master paintings in the first half of the 20th century, Hans Heinrich's inclusion of 20th century and 21st century paintings is certainly a very original extension of the collection's timeline, which has been told by everybody else this uh, very morning. Yeah? Um, a new chapter, particularly with respect to the collecting of American works of art, a most original opening to a section of the arts not yet commonly present in European museums. However, this brand new privileged field of research and collecting, how did not challenge the historical nature of the miraculous ensemble adorning the walls of Villa Favorita and other Tisebonemisa mansion. The dedicated interest for old master pictures still remained a parallel activity of uh, Hein Tisebonemisa in the some 50 years following his father's death in 1947. The old master section was tailored throughout the entire second half of the last century with outstanding achievements. From 1985 onwards, the passion of collecting inavoidably attracted the Baroness Carmen Cervera Tissa Bonemisa, who contributed a very original slant, particularly regarding the arts of 19th and 20th century, including the almost forgotten chapter of Spanish painting after Goya. The basis for the new acquisitions of the 1950s and 1960s was mainly to fill the gaps of missing leading personalities in the most competent of ways. To name just a few, the portrait of Francesco Cossa, the crucifixion by Zurbaran, a very rare example of Spanish master at the time, the Fra Bartolomeo, the Turkish scenes by Gian Antonio Guardi, and the Jesus and Child by Carlo Dolci, Florentine Baroque painter, so it's really speaking to my heart, <laughs> uh, represented in the first decade of a new generation's collecting skills astute integrations to the figurative world of Baron Tissembodemisa, the father. In the 60s, not only the name dropping continues, but more importantly, the unique quality of the pictures. Antonello, a rarity in itself, of course. Giovanni Bellini, the Bucintoro by Canaletto, the illumination-like moving image by Petrus Christus, which has been shown by Marco Grassi this very morning you know, with uh, inter interesting uh, uh, explanations, <laughs> I to say. A masterpiece by Piazzetta, you see the portrait of Giulia Lama, and a small altarpiece by Murillo will close the decade. A feature of the 70s is the increase, it is big merit, of the scant Spanish belongings by purchasing works by Goya, this beautiful portrait of Asensio Julia, El Greco, and in this case it would be the fourth painting by Greco in the collection, and once again, Zurbaran, in Santa Cavilda. For the first time, the Italian collection was enhanced with work by Duccio, and we have already seen this uh, this morning. 
Lotto is an astonishing portrait, Tura, Vercino, Giuseppe Maria Crespi, that I'm pleased to show this fantastic painting, who is uh, occupying a, 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 a wall in the, in the museum. It is a fantastic painting of a painter, which I think is not so really well known outside of the specialists. And moreover, with the, the breathtaking crucifixion, you know, sort of a Rätsel, we would say in, in German, you know, it is really a, a, a puzzle uh, because uh, you know that this painting has been attributed to Colantonio, a Neapolitan painter of the mid 15th century, and then to Antonello as an early work. And now the orientation of the critical orientation goes towards a, paint, a Valencian painter who is inspired by Van Eyck. Anyway, it is one of the most famous and most important paintings of this age ever. Qualitative forecasting is exhibited in the purchase of two absolute masterpieces by the so-called Pittura della Realtà, painting of reality. And this is an amazing painting, which is one of the masterpieces of the collection for me, the Epiphany of uh, Poor People by the Lombard Ceruti. And uh, it is on loan at the Museo Nazionale de Arte in Catalonia, but uh, I heard that the painting is coming back. In the, you know, in the 25th, they will open again um, the, yeah, the show with these uh, uh, refugees, as to say, and uh, that would be uh, very good. Um, and the ironical genocide by the Neapolitan Traversi. So there are punctures in the customary attitude to direct the compass towards the most renowned actors. Like, for instance, the minuscule portrait of Thomas Cranwell by, or close to Holbein the Younger, or the two Bateaux, or the Matthias Tom, just to name a few non-Italian artists. This will be evident through the 90s, albeit already at such early date, as we shall see, one will be pleased to welcome the St. Francis with an angel, a primary work of a rare counter-reformation painter like Piero Fenzoni, certainly not a glamorous prey for a first-class hunting collector. The same could be said of the boy with the flask attributed to Tommaso Salini, a painter of the Roman naturalistic wave and probably one of the best in the complex group of works listed under his name, currently being revised by connoisseurs. So these two, no, this, the second painter, not, the, not particularly the, the Fenzone, but the painting by Salini will be a large part of this, of this talk afterwards. This trend of collecting names, but not at the expenses of quality, or fine pictures by author without a reputation, which is even very important, continued into the early 90s, when a large selection of the infamous uh, Tissabon and Mesa collection was sold to Spain. The Spanish Neapolitan Ribera entered the collection for the first time, represented by two works of his early 30s, St. Jerome and the Pietà. This amazing painting is to the right uh, wall in, this, in the middle of these Caravaggios in that room. Following a Terbrücken and an iconical allegorical portrait by the rare Michael Sverz, a symbol of the Tines Bodemitsa Museum, to my eyes. Italy is, as usual, not forgotten. The large sketch for Tintoretto's Paradise was soon accompanied by the Fantastic Beccafumi and the astounding San Sebastian by Bronzino. I would say one of the most beautiful paintings of the man of his age in Tuscany. A point worthy of praise is the Baron's tendency to welcome into his collection, which was so strong on mainstream artists, works of art chosen according to his own taste, following criteria of style, composition, appeal, which did not necessarily concur with the celebrated names in the anthology of renowned protagonists from the old master scene. So it is striking that aside of Caravaggio, one will be able to admire paintings by fellow artists of the Counter-Reformation age at the turn of the century, who had a very high reputation. So that's yeah, lesser known artists. Yeah. And this is a Ferro Fenzone which has a, a, a dominant position in the corridor in, a, in, in the gallery, so I think that I'm very happy about that. To <laughs> um, my paintings uh, by fellow artists of the Counter Reformation age at the turn of the century, who had a very high reputation granted by the sources in their lifetime. This is the case of a prolific master from the Romagna, the previously remembered Ferro Fenzone, whose activity covered not only his birthplace, anyway belonging to the Stato della Chiesa, 
Even more, the walls of palaces and churches of Rome and of many towns in the central Italian region, Umbria. A master initially still rooted in the late Mannerist language, Fenzone achieved a sort of naturalistic skin by enlarging the surfaces, pushing on the three-dimensional parallel and experimenting with the effects of light and shadow. All this is visible in the stigma of St. Francis Tissa Bonemissa, a canvas which truly stands well above the average standards of this robust, sometimes repetitive, but by all means talented master, and adds a new voice to the polyphonic choir of Rome in the crucial decades between the sunset of 16th and the multilingual new schemes of the 17th century. A painting acquired with great foresight as early as 1978. Here I would like to know more about the, how did the, 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 the painting was purchased. Uh, evidently, the Baron had, uh, had, was very well advised or uh, this painting matched with his, uh, with, with his taste. Um, anyway, a, a year earlier, one of the pièces de résistance of the Italian uh, section entered the collection. The boy with the flask of wine attributed to a, an evanescent Roman personality of the age of Caravaggio, a student of the latter's ad adversary Baglione, Tommaso Salini. Notwithstanding the modern doubts and new proposals by scholars, on the basis of connoisseurship, this figure of youth surrounded by abundant vegetable still life was and remains a remarkable example from the first third of the 17th century, as well as being a masterpiece in its own right within the specific field of still life painting. Thou, quality is not everything. Historical complexity is often an additional, if not principal merit of a work of art as well as the collection or museum that owns it. The boy with the flask is indeed one of the most appealing pictures of the large group labeled Tommaso Salini, which is for the most part composed of still life pictures with Safage. The subdivision of this number of very similar depictions has been the commitment of scholars for the last 30 years. Albeit a, defined, a, a, a definite agreement has still to be reached. Even the idea of Salini as a specialized still life painter has been challenged, suggesting that the painter's speciality was rather the production of the flowers in vases, in vases without figures. Be as it is, the group of works exhibiting a more realistic nature is now associated with a brand new figure, a Roman Neapolitan Caravaggesque personality called Master of Baranello who assumed the topographic definition from a place in the southern Italian region Molise, where a church hosts the name piece of this Salini-like, more naturalistic artist. The Tissan canvas has not been linked to the new grouping. However, the whole profile of the historical Salini has not yet been defined. Lately, the work has been separated by the few autographed pictures by Salini, and given to another anonymous artist bearing the preposterous definition, master of the Lampronti flagellation. You see, uh, on the left-hand side, you see this uh, painting in a, in a private collection, which is really a competent painting. Uh, uh, and the other one is our painting, so to say, you know, here, here in, in the Tissen. Um, I really don't find uh, really so matching analogies between, between the two, but uh, that's, that is my, uh, that's my problem, not the problem of, uh, of the scholar who'd make this, uh, this grouping. Federico Zeri thought that this masterfully executed picture, uh, the Tissen one, of course, was too good in comparison to the known sacred pictures by Salini named by the sources, and thus expressed the view that a Tissen boy with a flask may have been the result of a joint venture with the much more talented Michelangelo Cerquozzi and other Roman Gersines and still life specialists. Probably, Salini's Boy with the Flask is one of the most frequently studied and quoted works of the Tissa Bonemitsa Museum, for sure emblematic proof of the collecting skills of Baron Hein Tissa Bonemitsa. The Boy with the Flask has always been considered, despite past severe reserves expressed by this present speaker, I have to apologize a bit, but I still find there are some weaknesses in this painting, particularly in the, in the clothes, but, but that, all the rest is marvelous. Um, one of the best, if not the very best achievement of Tommaso Salini 
In 1989, crucial year, the catalog of this minor personality had been inflated beyond any expectation. Very few sacred pictures have been added to the scant ones named by Baglione. This is our painting, and to the, you see a photo of a lost painting uh, who was uh, in, the, in an altar in the church of Sant'Agnese in Piazza Navona in Rome, and it was mentioned by Giovanni Baglione. We know that not only a rival of, of uh, Caravaggio, but he was, uh, as his merit as a historian, and he has write a biography of artists and the a description of the churches in Rome. So, I mean, uh, and not, not uh, really as a painter, but very, very good as a, as a writer. And, um, and this painting, which has something very much Orazio Gentileschesque, if you want, in the, in the person here, it is it's not for me. Um, I mean, not having had the pleasure of seeing it for sand, it is not a bad painting, but I cannot, I don't know if this style matches with the style of our painting. I think that our painting is a bit more evolute and, uh, and more, I don't know, uh, of course, more, less sacred, that, that, that goes without saying. I don't know, but this is one, just one example, and uh, you know that uh, Federico Zeri had written a couple of articles about Salini, he was one of his, uh, um, of his preferred minor personalities, and so he always tried to, to, to make the, 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 the group bigger. Anyway. The boy with the flask has always been considered, okay. That, um, on the other hand, numerous uh, general scenes, like the Tisabone Mista picture, albeit very far from it as quality is concerned, mainly with animals, boys with domestic animals, shepherds in the conspicuous company of sheep and goats, as I bore, I have to say, uh, bear witness of the esteem Salini held as a combated still life painter. To cut the story short, the collective group named Salini has dissolved. The physiognomy of the painter rests on a couple of altarpieces, only one of which is still in situ. We will see later on. St. Nicholas of Tolentino in Rome, Sant'Agostino. The dominant bulk of pastoral scenes, uh, initially labeled as uh, Pseudo Salini, are now listed under the arbitrary sobriquet Maestro degli Armenti, something like Master of the Flocks. Whereas the most noble part of the former Salini ensemble is split between two more naturalistic personalities, both also called by means of sobriquets. The first, we have already met it, being the Master of Badanello represented by a group growing, as already stated, around the Ecce Homo preserved in the church of San Michele Arcangelo in the most city of Baranello in Molise. So, it has been excluded. There are some similarities, if you wish, but uh, it, is, it is not enough to, to, to identify the same personality. This master, was, as we, will, we should say, now we have the whole of the painting of Baranello to the left side, not immune to the analytical and realistic style of Ribera, as one can argue from the long-bearded, solemn figure of Pilatus standing on the left-hand side. Next to the painting, Gianni Papi, our outstanding specialist, as well, I mean, worldwide of, uh, of uh, Caravaggesque issues, um, is, as the merit, if we want, not a merit, to be the dissector of Salini's corpse, has placed, just to name one famous examples, this mysterious canvas to the right, with a, with a famous uh, painting for, for the Caravaggio specialist, with the four crowned saints, um, which was uh, in, the, in the Roman church entitled to the, to, the, to the saints, and now is passed in the Museo di Palazzo Brasca in Rome. It is a dramatically lit early Caravaggio picture whose slim and almost naked protagonists have over the years been associated with the names of the Tuscans Francesco Rustici and Orazio Riminaldi, besides, of course, that of Salini. Another more modest amputation from Salini's corpus has struck a somewhat rough canvas, very likely the work of a relatively unexperienced master. We will see in a, in a in a few minutes, we'll see this, this painting that I'm mentioning already now, with the Saints Cecilia and Valeriana crowned by an, or, an angel, formerly in the collection Stein in Paris, published by Zeri in 1976 and then reappeared in an auction in 2004. 
This, you will see uh, soon it. Despite the analogies with Salini's characters, like the female allegorical figure in the San Nicolas of Tolentino altarpiece, which you will see later, Papi has shifted the Stein painting into another anonymous grouping attributed to the master of St. Lucy's arms. And so I think that uh, these dissections are not all necessary from, from, to, to, to my ears more than to my eyes. By far, the most striking newborn out of the dismissed corpse of Salini is the very last onomastic invention by Papi, that is, the personality who is also associated with the Tissan Bonemisa boy with the flask. Even though this destiny of depriving Prusalini of the brilliant Tissan Bonemisa canvas might have to be accepted, one still feels at ease comparing this very painting with some other extraordinary pictures from different groupings. Now, the Tissan Bonemisa work appears to be a sort of highlight by this new master of the Lampronti flagellation aggregate sharing company with the superior Bacchus, formerly in Galerie Lepke in Berlin. You see, to the left-hand side, this marvelous painting, which is, uh, of course, very analogous to, to, to the one in Tissel for the position, but I, don't, I cannot say it is identical uh, in force of the style. And even the, but there are many analogies. There's, there's nothing to say. And this is a, a painter have got, it is a picture, have got many fathers, have got many attributions, and now, um, my colleague Gianni Papi thinks to this personality uh, maestro della flagellazione Lampronti. But for me, you see this detail of, of, of the face of the executioner, and I think there is something different, because I think that in this very painting, this name piece of the group that you will see now, this is the name, the, the whole painting, there is something which speaks more about uh, French Caravagism speaks something about uh, Nicolas Tournier. I, don't, I, I cannot see really so dramatic links to, to Salini or to what we understand uh, under Salini, which is a lot of uh, different personalities. For the sheer sake of quality then, one could maybe approve the consistencies of the grouping. Whereas the link to the name piece the flagellation, formerly the Cesare Lampronti, is, for me, not convincing. The name piece works instead very well. I, I've written that, but in a few days I've changed my, my mind, unfortunately. Uh, this is uh, two other paintings which Gianni Papi includes in the group uh, Maestro Lampronti. And uh, one is a... Uh, is visible, even if it is in very bad condition, is visible in the Pinacoteca Civica in Spoleto, in Umbria. Um, and the other one, the struggle scene, um, it is, uh, where the whereabouts are unknown, uh, but here the physiognomies are maybe more akin to those uh, of, uh, of, um, of our painting. But uh, it is, um, I mean, I think it is a, a wishful word. I, I, I cannot understand how we can put all this together, but anyway, uh, O only looking at the face of Christ, uh, we can have some analogies to the, the, the smiling child, and uh, the person to the left uh, equally. Um, it, is, it, it is a very interesting uh, fact uh, that uh, this specialist has uh, put together things, because I ca have to deny something, but I have to accept something. So, I mean, it is a, it is a way to, to, it is sort of revolution, no? when you are destroying uh, the, the former catalog of a, of a uh, rather famous uh, artist. Some features like the hidden or explicitly shown larger ears of the sitters have been pointed out by Papi as a sort of hallmark of the anonymous painter. Consistent to the name piece of this last bone grouping is a quite recently auctioned depiction of a man with a laurel wreath and glass of wine. Here I think there are no problem to accept the, this, this could be the same hand. That is, a, we have made a comparison with the persecutor of Christ in the flagellation Lampronti, and I think that, uh, that works uh, rather well. Thou, I am afraid that a stylistic relationship uh, hardly works with respect to the boy with the flask. Now we can see details of all these three paintings. Ours is here, and Lampronti there, and uh, the new. Uh, there, there is something. It is undisputable. It is something. But I, 
Tom, I don't know. I think here we have a, a more dry uh, execution. There, there is a more uh, soft and gummy. I'm not that uh, that sure. One could add. On the, I mean, one could add something else. For instance, Papi has uh, put another painting in the in the group, which is this. Uh, a crowning of thorns of, of Christ, and in fact, uh, the face of the of the of the, of the uh, man there is is very akin to the to the to the Tisa Bonimissa. But why not think to uh, another painter like uh, uh, Giuseppe Vermiglio and his uh, uh, crowning of thorns in Palazzo Altieri in Rome? So I mean, it is it is a, a very a very open things thing. But one disturbing factor is naturally the extreme length of some of the labeling of these anonymous masters, which would remind us Italians of many titles of Linovet Muller's films. No less active in such an anomastic redundant realm seems to be the art historian who is capable of labeling an unknown outstanding painter of the German Renaissance as the Meister der Fullendorfer Altarflügeln. So personally, I would be happy to abandon for instance, one of Salini's, so to speak, nephews, that is the Maestro delle Limosine di Santa Lucia. If the paintings classified by this thematic label show links to the Southern Italian Counter-Reformation academ academic way of painting in the wake of Azzolino, the father-in-law of Ribera, the parameters with regards to the ex-Salini painting, the boy of the flask, differ and are within the context of the demolition of a fading personality the most interesting. In fact, the St. Cecilia X. Stein, finally we see it, here on the, on the left-hand side, in this new grouping, is a sort of apex legomenon. Cecilia is by all means, as stated before, the stylistic counterpart of the female allegory to the right below. At the bottom left of a rare, authentic Salini, the Saint Nicholas Tolentino in the Roman Church of Sant'Agostino. However, Either we do not have enough stylistic elements for further comparisons, or a different artist is responsible for this composition, who at least at this stage is very akin to Salini. A key figure in this depiction is the slightly oversized crowning angel. Ah, ah. Yeah. Whose triangular, triangular face and curly thick hair staged by the juxtaposition of light and shade appears to be the closest to the world of a main representative of Caravaggism, Bartolomeo Cavarozzi. Very telling is, in this respect, the morphological similarity, when not identity, of the head of the angel to the left and its counterpart in the famous sacrifice of Isaac, formerly in the Piaseca Johnson collection, that we see the, the whole uh, the right hand side uh, below and uh, a detail uh, right hand side uh, mm -hmm. above. A masterpiece well worthy of Caravaggio, to whom in fact the canvas was for a long time attributed. In the long run, it is thus a realistic perspective to successfully give real anagraphic names to some of the paintings collected in the above mentioned groups, which all originate from the ashes of the Moloch Salini. So my view is that we have to consider that the real Salini, which is not, not easy to, to, to block, to fix, and uh, Cavarozzi, which is even not easy to block in his, uh, in his uh, early years, they could have been parallel painters. That, that, that is, that is my, my bottom line. Uh, unfortunately, the hardest task still remains, and that is to grasp the real personality who created the boy with the flask, whose predominating balcony of Savoy cabbages in the foreground is a unique feature. One might find a reliable parallel in some of the still lives attributed to Salini by Federico Zeri. For instance, the still life with fruits and vegetables formerly in the Busiri Vici collection. Once believed to be the work of Pietro Paolo Bonzi, which is uh, uh, to the right hand side above. <clears throat> and the stupendous still lie with artichokes in a bucket, the vegetables played with cherries below to the right, which appeared on the London market in 1981. The typology of cabbage and its illumination is more than similar to the spectacular foreground of the Tissom painting. Equally striking is its combination of the figurative and still life against a bare wall in the background, 
diagonally bisected by light and shade, employing the most Caravaggesque, or would-be Caravaggesque, of devices. Even for the Tissa Bonemissa picture, one could recall actors starring in, Carav in Cavarotti's works. Like, for instance, the figure of the angel to the right, in the Virgin and Child crowned by angels belonging uh, to the Campbell Sarah Laffer Foundation. It is in display in the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. You see the, the hole to the left-hand side uh, below and uh, the detail to the right and known in several versions. One of the most beautiful is uh, here in Madrid, in the Prado. I find personally this re relationship rather convincing that the, this were at least two painters, if not uh, uh, only one, but who were speaking uh, tightly to, to each other. The softness of uh, Cabarrotti's youngster and the light shade partition have been altered in the Tissimo de Misa boy, who shows a dry rendering. Farther comparisons with the Tissin smiling protagonist can be made, for example, by selecting elements from two altarpieces by Cabarrotti, the stoning of St. Stephen to the left of Monte Rotondo, in the Cathedral of Monte Rotondo, and the visitation in the Palazzo Comunale Viterbo, who is, uh, happily enough, uh, is dated 1622. In the latter, particularly with regard to the fa facial features of the second figure from the left, which I don't know it is Maria of Cleopa, I, I, I cannot identify her, uh, that, cannot be, that can almost be superimposed to the face of the Tisa Bonimisa uh, youngster. In the mid-late mid 90s, when the present speaker had been appointed, thanks to the generous sponsorship by the deeply missed Luciano Berti and Marco Grassi, Marco Grassi, pillar of both friendship and connoisseurship for the Tissabon Misa cause, with the mesmerizing task of writing the catalog for Italian paintings of the 17th and 18th century in the Tissabon Misa Museum, one of the most important specimens of the so-called new manner of painting that has roughly said the pictorial style conceived in the wake of Caravaggio was not on display in the museum, nor confined to the storage rooms. No, the author of the brilliantly acquired, I'm sorry, <laughs> of the brilliantly acquired Venus, Mars, and Amoretti that has been shown by Marco Grassi this very morning, um, the Venice the Venice-born Carlo Saraceni was at that point certainly, notwithstanding the efforts of uh, Roberto Longhi and the milestone monograph by Anna Otani Cavina of 1968, still a name for specialists rather than a larger audience. Bought in 1982, the superb mythological copper plate remained in the private collection of the, Bar of the Baron and was subsequently donated to Carmen Cervera. Thanks to her care and committed will, the painting is currently shown in the private collection of the Baroness and was added to the permanent collection of this very Musea Nazionale Peace and Bonnemisa. Back in the 90s, I dared express a desire to examine the Saraceni picture firsthand, which was generously and promptly met by the Baron. A limousine drove me to the residence of the Baron in the immediate northern outskirts of Madrid, and I will never forget the welcoming nonchalance with which I was introduced to the Baron's estate. Leisurely dining and chatting along the pool, our smiling host continuously talking on the phone to the Baroness, provisionally resident in China, for an exhibition. Time elapsed graciously under the pagoda-like roof of the, of the mansion, the talking, like talking to an old acquaintance or even friend, so that we both became oblivious to the technical reasons of the visit. Suddenly, it was time for a medical checkup, but the Baron, while putting the copper plates in my hands, was not perturbed. I should continue the examination, not being bothered by his commitments, to whom he dedicated himself without any shyness. In fact, the shyness was, was fully on my part, so that I did not really want to stay much longer, as I would have in instead dearly wished, with that masterpiece in my shaking hand. I tried to awkwardly sketch down a couple of notes while Hein Tissabon and Miss Andesabille kept on speaking to me in Cortes' words. I managed to stay longer in front of the Venus and Mars some 20 years later, in both venues of the Carlos Saraceni retrospective 
held respectively in Rome, Palazzo Venezia, and Venice, Galileo dell'Accademia, in 2014. As it is commonly argued, the first impression First impression are so which matters. So, the thrill of the first encounter at the Caravaggio show in Naples, 1985, happened within an area of Saraceni contemporaries that was much too large, to my eyes and heart. The real date will remain forever, the one near Madrid, the Moraleja Rendezvous. Fortunately enough, it is more, it's not the task of the pre present speaker to utilize the Tisabonese copper plate more than it occurred to him to already do. Beyond any arbitrary statement, the sheer fact that the Venus and the Mars covered 100% of the recent exhibitions catalog of 2014 underscores its importance and beauty. Less inspiring, however, is the chronological position given to this outstanding work in the very complex and contradictory stylistic evolution of the Venetian master. A mistake I also made. Unfortunately, a date around 1600, 1605 is, to my renewed judgment, far too early for a painting which has nothing left of the Ferrarese aesthetic of a supporter of Garofalo, like in the Lazzaro and the Rich Man in the Napoteca Capolina in Rome, or in the Quiet and Naive Christ, Christ Among the Doctors of a Private Collection, or even the Exquisite Paradise of the Met. Independently of the discrepancies in quality, these three pictures are certainly to be understood as early works by Saraceni, whereas the style as well as chronological distance are very evident in the mythological scenes purported to be of the same date, like the works in San Paolo and the Carmen Tisa Bonimitsa collection, both devoted to the outer wedlock adventures of Venus and Mars. This is particularly true of the very rare letter copper plate whose correct date of creation has to be placed at least a decade later than stated in the exhibition's catalog, and, and even in the catalog that I've written, unfortunately. <laughs> in immediate proximity to the murals of the Sala Regia in Quirinale, 1616 to 1617. At any rate, the miniaturistic paraphernalia in the Stissen Bonimis of Venus and Mars, still recall Ferrara and the wall painting by Garofalo, as you see in the right hand side, in the Palazzo del Seminario, executed in 1519 for Girolamo Sacrati. The King David, who presses on Golia's large head, is one of the, in one of the Vele, and the neighboring armies of Putti look as if they belonged to the fuel of Saraceni's engine, even at the very end of his entirely Roman career. It has been nothing short of surprising to see the Tissa Bosemitsa copper plate surrounded by the six Icaro scenes from Caprimonte and other Ovidian stories, all considered to date from 16, um, 1600 to 1605, in the second room of the Roman monographic exhibition called La Luce, Il Paesaggio, Il Mito, completed by the Vision Andromeda, the Mad Paradise, and the angel appearing to Manab's wife in Basel. It was immediately telling how much more mature the Venus and Mars picture appeared in comparison with all the other roommates. On the contrary, it feels almost to be an automatism to read the Tissa Bonemisa masterpiece in a line with some altarpieces of the second decade, starting with the rest of the flight into Egypt in Monte Porzo Catone, startling in the comparison between Venus and the Virgin and the Child, formerly in Frascati, whose date is no longer 1606. It was, an, uh, it was a fake information. It was uh, written on the, on, the, on the painting, you know, but it was a, a th an information given later on. Now we know the, um, the allegation document and so on, so it was done, it was finished by August 1612. So you see, it is a big difference. It is, uh, and, uh, and, but it was, you know, the, the around this very painting, one, the only one almost who, had, who, who bore a date, Longhi has constructed his Saraceni, you know? so it, it was uh, very interesting. Yeah, the, it's, the date is no longer six, uh, as a later inscription on the canvas for a long time successfully antedated it, but around 1612, since the other piece was only fully paid in August of that year. Moreover, the posture of Mars, combined with the head profile of Venus, retraced respectively those of the angel, and of the saint in the Saint Cecilia of the Los Angeles County Museum, 
to the right. Similarly, the figure of San Rocus to the right in Naples, Capodimonte, and his raised right arm have much in common with Venus' attitude and her lover's straight arm. Following this line, another altarpiece of the middle of this decade, like the martyrdom of St. Erasmus of Gaeta, offers elements of comparison. One of them being a flying angel on the very top left, we see this very detail on the image on the right hand side, and, it is, um, and the comparison um, goes to the central putto fighting with the bad clothes in the Tis Monemitsa copper. Or, the carved house in the background, similar to the smaller one of Vulcan, which serves as a backdrop to the Venus and Mars scene. Vulcan's house provides a survey of dynamic sculptures which will not go unnoticed by the most robust and three-dimensional-like um, representative of such any circles, Marc Antonio Bassetti, as you can see in the beautiful painting with Joseph and Potiphar's wife, which passed very many times on the market. We have almost reached the end. <laughs> Volcan's house provides us, yeah, another out of five putti depicted in the obedience scene by Saraceni, precisely the one sitting second from the left, you see here to the left, uh, could have been inspired by the one holding uh, the picture of the Pope to the right hand side um, in the stigma of St. Francis in Lanzo Torinese. And I have a, I chosen to show this painting because it's one of the very, very uh, scant number of paintings which, which bore a, a signature and a date. Um, and it, it is a, have a signature and the, bear the date 1614. So we are always still in this uh, date, uh, 16, 12, 14, 16. So I think this, uh, this is the date of the chronology of uh, the Tizen painting. An open issue concerns the relationship of Saraceni with the region Piemonte. Apart from in Turin, there is another altarpiece by him in Brusasco, slightly east of the capital, near the confluence of the Dora Balti and the Po, farther afield on the southern tip of the Lake Dorta, in the, in the northeastern province of, of Novara, the small city of Gozzano holds a virgin with angels, which you see on the right hand side, now in the church of San Salvatore, but originally preserved in the Santuario del Boggio. Even if the rather clumsy artistic personality responsible for the altarpiece cannot be identified fully with Sir Chen himself, it is very apparent that the source of his style is by all means Saraceni, and not, as it is believed, the Caravaggio's classicist, if one might define him so, Alessandro Turchi, his collaborator in the equipe active in the Sala Regia in the Quirinal Palace in, Florence, in Rome. We may just choose one more reference to this Saraceni convergence by recalling the small angel with the sword you see it in the, in the middle of the figure, with the sword on the top right of the altarpiece in Santa Maria della Scala in Rome, you see it on the right, right hand side, um, depicting the death of the Virgin, and by comparing it with the one on the lower right hand side in the as yet anonymous Gozano altarpiece, you can see this figure and the angel with the sword. So it is something in, uh, belonging to Saraceni, not, uh, not to, to other personalities. The Moraleja Saraceni was indeed not the only gem which happened to be concealed in the private premises of that supreme collector. It was mainly small size works, Benis Veduti by Guardi, or, as I still vividly recall, a very fine baptism of Christ on copper by the Apulian Corrado Giaquinto, an exquisite work related to the large altarpiece in Santa Maria dell'Orto in Rome, albeit fully accomplished, more a ricordo, maybe, than a preparatory sketch. I regret having to pronounce the word end to this talk right now, since too many personal topographical changes impeach me to locate in endless crates the photograph of another version of Jacinto's picture, hanging in a church somewhere in the province of France, in whose location I have equally not been able to trace so far. Hope dies last, so may be in the foreseeable future there will be time for this disclosure of another abandon to the Moraleja Act. Thank you very much.